Hey, today after watching this video, you'll know how to do the Portuguese recipe called Rizoge de Camarão, also known as Portuguese shrimp deep fried turnovers. This is a classic dish seen around Christmas a lot, served as appetizers for family parties. Also, if you visit Lisbon, you'll see it in a lot of taverns. It's often served as an appetizer, almost like tapas in Spain, and it's just delicious. Not that hard to make, so we'll get right to it. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is chop up my shrimp. You wanna chop it up in pretty small pieces, about quarter inch pieces, and then salt and pepper the shrimp. Chop up the onions, pretty small dice, about a quarter inch. Put a little butter in the pan, about two tablespoons. Pan's already warm. Let that melt a little bit. I will saute the onions. And you want to let the onions saute for about probably five to ten minutes. They should be pretty soft and maybe just starting to turn a little golden color. So now I'm going to make a roux. I put in about two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of flour. The reason you make the roux is because the butter coats all the little granules of flour and therefore when you go to thicken your sauce, because you're basically this interior of the Resolve has a um, almost like a really thick bechamel sauce. In order for it not to clump up, you mix flour and butter together. That way, when the flour and butter get mixed into the milk sauce, it just evenly distributes throughout the sauce and does not clump up. And you just need to cook it for about five minutes. Okay, you can see the onions are starting to get some color. I'll add a little bit of salt because they haven't been seasoned. The shrimp have been seasoned, so I'll just add those in now. I have a little pd pd sauce. You could use any hot sauce to your own taste. I like to put a little bit of ground thyme, about a quarter teaspoon. Chopped up some fresh parsley. Now I'm gonna grate some fresh nutmeg. You also could use pre-ground nutmeg if you don't have the fresh. This is optional, you know, if you're not a fan of nutmeg, you don't have to add it in. This dish is classically stuffed with a shrimp mixture, but you also can do it with chicken, pork, or beef. Now I'm gonna add in the nutmeg. That fresh nutmeg smells so good. Okay, all the ingredients are in there except for the milk, so now I'm gonna add in the milk. The shrimp's not fully cooked yet, but that's okay. It's gonna warm up and cook with the addition of the milk. So it's a cup of milk. I'm reserving just a little bit because you wanna make sure this mixture is really thick. It should not be watery at all. Okay, our shrimp mixture is boiling and you do want it to be at least at a simmer before you add in the roux. Now I'll add in the, the roux here. I'm gonna put in about 75% of it at first just to see how it thickens up. I can see that's already thickened up really nice. You can see how it's leaving a streak behind in the pan, but it's still too watery, so I'll put in the rest of the roux. Probably takes about three to five minutes for the roux to have its full effect. And this is what you want. See how thick it is? So I'm not gonna add in, I only had maybe another two tablespoons of milk, but you know, depending on how much water your shrimp lets out, you know, that's gonna thin the sauce a little bit. I think that's looking really good. That's done. You could do this up to 24 hours in advance, just let it cool off. So I'm gonna turn off the fire. The other thing you could do is if you think it's, there's too much liquid, since we're using breadcrumbs in this recipe anyway, you could add in a couple tablespoons of breadcrumbs directly to this mixture if you think it's not holding up enough. But that looks really good. See how it's just holding, doesn't flop down. There's no, there's no liquid that's pouring out from the sides, so. That is perfect, we'll set that aside. Another unique aspect of this dish is the dough. It's actually what they call masa cuzida. In this recipe, we're cooking the dough first and then we're gonna roll it out. Okay, I have two cups of milk in here. Now I'm gonna add in four tablespoons of butter. We're gonna let that melt. Put in one teaspoon of salt. When this comes to a simmer, you should see bubbles on the side. That's when you mix in the flour and stir vigorously until it starts to come off the sides and forms into a ball.
So basically, I divide the dough in two separate balls. You just want the dough to come together a little bit. After I get it into a ball shape, I will work the dough into a log. Or you could just roll this out into a flat sheet and then cut out little circles and then fold it over and pinch the edges. I find the technique that I'm going to show you right now a little simpler. The board is not floured at all. It's really just not necessary with this dough. And I'll roll out a little piece of the dough here. You want it to be maybe about an eighth of an inch thick. You want it to be enough of a flat spot to fit either a cookie cutter, and I like actually using the non-sharp side of the cookie cutter, the blunt side, or you could use your favorite highball glass. Put about a little less than a tablespoon in the middle, then you fold it over and you just go with your cookie cutter and press down. And how simple is that? Just like perfect. Looks like it came off an assembly line. Then you could fold this back into itself and just do the same thing again. It's actually easier to work with the dough while it's still warm. So definitely prepare your shrimp mixture first, and then this dough is easier to work with when it's still a little warm. Move it over itself. And again, this technique, I'll use the highball glass. There you go. Just just about as good as the cookie cutter. I think I am going to switch to a little bit of a smaller cookie cutter. This is going to be an appetizer. I'm going to eat some of this today and I'm going to save some of this for Christmas. So instead of about a three inch cookie cutter, I'm going to go with about a two and a half inch. I also have a Portuguese playlist if you want to check that out and some other appetizers. I have deep fried asparagus. If you got the hot oil out, this beer battered deep fried asparagus is super simple too. Okay, you can see I made 23 of the risoles to come at all or the Portuguese shrimp turnovers. I actually tasted some of the filling, a pretty good bite of it because I was hungry. So the recipe does make 24. You can see I have a little bit extra dough. What, what I would suggest again is when you cut that dough in half, you know, make half of it. And if you think you need a little more, just get a smaller cookie cutter or glass to cut down on the size and that way you could stretch it out a little bit. So now we'll go over to the next procedure. We're gonna make an egg wash. I'm gonna beat some eggs with a little bit of water and I'm gonna dip these into the egg wash and then into the breadcrumbs. All right, we have our egg wash ready. So usually at this procedure, you like to keep one hand wet and one hand dry. So left hand, go ahead and let it get wet in the egg wash. Then try to keep this hand dry. And at this point, I already do have my oil heating up. You want your oil to be between about 350 and 365. Also at this point, after you bread them, you know, you could line the cookie sheet pan with uh, some parchment paper if you want to be safe and then cover it with plastic wrap. And these can be frozen for a few weeks and then bust them out for Christmas or whenever you have some family over. The temperature is around 352 degrees, so that should be good. It could be a little higher, up to like 365, even 375, because the temperature is going to drop a little bit. But you want to keep it in that range of 350 to 375. If you don't have a professional like deep fryer, you might have to play around with the temperature of the oil and check it every once in a while. And ideally, I highly recommend having these thermometers. They just come in handy for so many applications. So if you don't have a thermometer, what you want to do is just put one in and it should sizzle right away when you start putting it see how it's doing that if you didn't see that sizzle right away as you dipped it in the oil you would know it's not hot enough you know the interior is already cooked so really all you're cooking is the dough so anywhere from like three to five minutes at the most you're more looking just for a golden color like these have just been in there for about two minutes and they're already looking really good. Check my temperature. You can see now the oil temperature dropped from like 352 to 327. And depending on how much oil you're using and the power of your burner will determine how many of these you could fry at a time. If you see your oil is dropping below 300, you definitely wanna fry fewer turnovers at a time. Okay, they're done. I will put them on a plate lined with some paper towels to soak up the extra oil. Before you fry it, you could freeze it for you know a few weeks. And once you fry it, I would say you would want to eat them within the day for sure, preferably within a few hours. 
Now you can make these delicious risoles to come in on. These Portuguese shrimp turnovers are fantastic. Just bit into a few of them. Really just creamy inside. Go ahead and make these in advance. They're just a great party appetizer and great for Christmas and other celebrations throughout the year. Thanks for joining me. Now go cook for someone you love.